Okay, so for cardiovascular, the sort of questions I'm going to be asking for cardiovascular system are, do you suffer from any, have you had any chest pain recently? Or felt palpitations, your heart racing? Okay. What about shortness of breath? Um, or shortness of breath on exertion, when you're, when you're doing something, when you're exerting yourself. Syncope, which is these sudden blackouts, and that can be sometimes when the heart is not supplying enough blood up to the brain, so the brain goes on holiday. Hello, bye-bye. Okay, and then you hit the deck. And the other one is calf pain. When you're walking and you feel pain in your calves, doosh, doosh, doosh. Oh, and you stop, you wait a little while, and the pain subsides. Oh, bliss. Then you're ready to walk again. Doosh, 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 doosh. Oh, all ties up. And that's to do with the blood getting down to supply these big bulky leg muscles. Okay, and if you've got some blockage in your arteries because of all that fatty animal fats which are lining the arteries and they're stopping the blood getting to those big juicy bulky muscles, then those muscles are going to start screaming and going, yeah, give us some oxygen and glucose. And that scream is felt as that sharp pain. Good, so that's a cardiovascular problem. The, the other thing is obviously chest chest pain itself. So um, if you've got chest pain, it's very, very, very important to, um, to find out. So do you, have any, do you have any pains in your chest at all? The last one, moving on now, is um, respiratory. So respiratory systemic inquiry involves asking questions like, do you suffer from a shortness of breath on the, on the exertion? Or have you had any shortness of breath recently? What about a wheeze? Have you had a wheeze recently? Um, that's that, that. Stridor, okay, so that's an inspiratory noise, stridor, oh, so that's an upper airway problem. Hemoptysis, heme for blood, so hemoptysis, are you coughing up blood? Um, sputum, so any, produce any sputum when you cough? Or are you coughing in general? So that's respiratory. GI, which is gastrointestinal, you're asking questions like, are you vomiting any diarrhea? Okay, have you been losing weight at all? Or have you experienced any loss in appetite? So these are all those front-loading things. Have you been vomiting blood? In, that's hematemesis. You've been vomiting blood. And then you want to start asking things about the other end of the GI system. So, have you had any blood which you've been passing? or slime or mucus for, from your rectum. Any change in your bowel habits? You used to go once a day, now you're going all the time, nearly every 25 minutes. Okay. Um, a bloating of your tummy, pain in your tummy, or any tenesmus, really straining to pass feces. Next, we move on to genital urinary. So genital urinary, you're asking questions like, do you have any blood in your urine? So hematuria. Any dysuria, pain when you're passing urine. Any nocturia, um, passing urine at night, getting up to go to the loo at night. Um, frequency, are you having to go more frequently than you normally do? Urgency, are you feeling the burn? I need to get to the loo quite quickly. Dribbling, so are you just dribbling urine all the time, so incontinent? Hesitancy, so you, you hesitating before you actually go, and that could be a sign of benign prostatic hyperplasia. Um, the next one is um, incomplete voiding. Okay, so you've got your urine which is which is remains within the bladder and you don't pass it all with one foul swoop. Next we go on to MSK, which is musculoskeletal. So you're asking about morning stiffness. Do you have stiffness in the morning, or is your stiffness worse at night? Um, and the pain, do you have pain worse in the morning, or is the pain worse in the evening? And that can differentiate between two types of arthritic conditions. One is rheumatoid, and the other one is uh, osteoarthritic. Then we move on to CNS. For CNS, we're talking about things like, have you had any fits recently, any faints, any head, any weaknesses, any headaches, any loss of sensations, 
so people practice stroke, any confusion, any slur in your speech, or any, anyone said you, your speech has been a bit slurred without having any alcohol, by the way. And then the last section is skin. Remember skin, that biggest organ in your body, any rashes, any ulcers, any lumps or bumps that you've noticed recently. So that's number nine. And then we finish here on number 10. And number 10, ice, ice, baby. Dun, 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 dun. Ice, ice, baby. Now ice, what's it all about? Well, there's several parts to ice, and you've got to be clever. Anybody can ask ice, I can teach a five-year-old to ask about ice, but a true, true medic will be very clever on how they ask ice. I stands for ideas, concerns, and expectations, okay? So the ideas is what is a patient's idea of what's wrong with them, concerns is what concerns they may have, and E is expectations, what do they expect to be done for them. Now you can't go up to a patient and just ask, so what do you think it is then, okay? Because they'll turn around and say, well, you're the doctor, you tell me. Okay, so that's no good. You can't go up to them and say, so, do you have any concerns? And say, well, of course I've got concerns. I come in to see you at night. So you've got to be careful about that. Expectations. Um, so do you have any expectations? Yeah, I've got expectations. I want you to treat me. <laughs> how about that? Can you do that? You're a doctor, aren't you? Yeah. So you've got to be careful how you ask this. So what I normally do, this is my top tip to students, always hit the empathy notes. And remember, there's marks in the exam for empathy. And really mean it, by the way. Don't just do it to, to play up. Okay, so start off with empathy for each one of these and you'll just find you're just cruising to it nice and gently. So let's start with ideas. So then you say, you've just spent all this time collecting these masses of information on the patient. So you've now exposed them for who they really are. Okay, so you know all about them. So now what you do is you use all that information as a weapon against them. So you then turn it round on them and you just say, like, I can see that you've... You know, you're obviously doing this for your job, it must be quite busy, and you've had this cough now, you tell me it's going on for this long and it's causing you all these problems, and if it's been affecting your sleep, it's been, it might have been affecting your sleep and things like that, and I see you've had these problems in the past. Have you, have you had any sort of thoughts as to what you might think it might be? Yeah. So this is where you turn it round on the patient now, and because you become in with that empathetic side of things, Hopefully you should lead them to a stage where they're just like in the zone to now share with you what their idea is. And they'll say, yeah, doctor, you know what? It's interesting, you know, I, 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 I've just been thinking about this for the last couple of days. And I, 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 think, I, think I, may have, I think I may have a brain tumor. This headache just won't go away. I think I may have a brain tumor. I'm, and I'm really, really worried because I've got small kids at home. And normally you find... They move straight from the eye into the sea. So I'm really concerned. I've got kids at home. If I have a brain tumour, this is really bad. I was really worried about this. Okay. So you normally find that. If they don't, you can always ask them. After they say, they say, um, so you, I think doctor, it's because I've got a brain tumour or something like that. Then you then go on to the next question, which is, um, so I, I guess you must be quite worried about that. So you're hitting again that empathetic angle. And then hopefully they're going to come in and say, yes, well, yeah, I am a doctor. I'm quite worried about that. It's, it's really, really concerning me. And I've not been able to sleep. I mean, I've not, been, I've not been performing well at work. My work's affected. Yes, and my boss has been asking me what's been wrong with you. And I, I just don't want to shout. it, want to burden him with all these problems that I've got. Okay. Then you can move again into E. Start off with empathy. So this, I'm going to write in red here so you guys don't forget. Empathy. Because for E, expectations, for E, what we do here, we start with the empathy, which is, well, I can see that you're quite concerned and, um, and I can see the idea that you shared with me that of what you think it may be. Um, what would be the best outcome? you um, for coming to see me on this visit. What would be the best outcome? Now you're just giving them the forum, putting them on the podium 
and they are going to tell you exactly what it is they wanted from you. They're on the podium now. So expectations. Rather than them asking them, so what do you want me to do for you? Yeah, 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 and what? So very, very, very different. This is very clever, this bit. So you've got to be really clever about how you do this. And then somewhere in, in this section here, you want to be thinking, just before you present back your history, you want to be thinking about possible risk factors for this particular condition why this patient came in. Okay, so you want to be thinking about some risk factors after you've collected all your information for why it is that this patient came in. And that, ladies and gentlemen, if you can do that, should get you, hopefully, some OSCE success in the history taking. So I'm just going to go through and just do a quick recap of those 10 key points. Number one, patient profile. Number two, presenting complaint. In number three, the history of the presenting complaint. This is the gossip note. In number four, past medical history. In number five, the drug history. In number six, don't you forget those allergies. In number seven, family history. In number eight, keeping it social. In number nine, systemic inquiry. And number ten, ice, ice, baby. Dun, 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 dun. Ice, ice, baby. Dun, 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 dun. Now stop. Collaborate and listen. <laughs> ice is back with a brand new vision. <laughs>